What's up guys? So what I've got here today is the Samsung SmartThings Hub. And for those of you who don't know what this is, it's a smart home hub that allows you to integrate various smart home devices like a motion sensor or a smart door lock so that they can all communicate with each other. And for the past month, I've been building my smart home around this hub. And let me tell you, I've got a lot in store for you guys in these upcoming videos. I also realized that the timing of this video is a bit awkward considering that Samsung SmartThings recently outsourced their hardware to a company called AOTech, which means that most of the hardware at major retailer stores are sold out, including the SmartThings V3 hub. And in case you're wondering, I got this on eBay. Anyways, for any of you guys who are planning to build a smart home or have already dabbled a little bit into it, I hope the rest of the content in this video will help shed some light into the smart home world. So let's get started. From my research, there are two types of smart homes. The first is the DIY or do-it-yourself project, and the second is a more expensive and professional system. And just so we're clear, companies that are in the do-it-yourself category include Google, Amazon, Samsung, Hubitat, and Apple, compared to more professional companies like Control4 or Crestron, whom have been in the game a lot longer. And if you're wondering which type my videos will be focusing on, surprise! It's the do-it-yourself projects. Now get to work. Nowadays, smart home devices are getting cheaper and all it takes to build a system is just one device. However, what is not obvious is how this first device may affect the addition of another one or how you may want to control your devices in the future. Which brings us to our next topic, types of smart home people. From what I've seen, there are people that build their homes around a hub and those that go Hubless. As the name would imply, Hubless users do not use a physical hub to connect their devices. Instead, their devices connect wirelessly to the cloud, and depending on whether they stick with a single ecosystem like Google Home, or various incompatible ecosystems like Ring and Arlo, they may only need to use one or several apps to control their devices. On the other hand, other companies such as Samsung SmartThings, Hubitat, and Wink have created physical hubs that allow devices to connect to them via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but they also include other protocols or ways of communication such as Zigbee and Z-Wave. In contrast to a Wi-Fi network where devices communicate with and only with one hub, in other words, your router, Zigbee and Z-Wave use something called a mesh network, which allows their devices to communicate with one another and thus extend the range of communication to reach the hub. These devices also consume significantly less power than their equivalent Wi-Fi ones, which allows for a smaller form factor ideal for smart home devices such as a contact sensor used for your door or window. So you can only imagine how the addition of Zigbee and Z-Wave protocols in a hub expand the variety of devices that you can incorporate into your smart home compared to one without a hub. The last feature to consider is whether or not you want to build a system with a hub that uses local processing or cloud processing. Both types of hubs do the same thing, which is to receive input signals from your devices, process it, and then send a signal back out to perform a task such as turning on your bathroom lights when your motion sensor detects motion. But the difference lies in where this processing is performed. Hubs with local processing do this on the spot inside the hub, so they won't need the internet to process the signal before it's sent back out to the device. Only unless it's to remotely access the hub via an app, mm -hmm. for example. A cloud-based hub will require internet connection, and this is because the signal received by it isn't processed inside of it. Instead, it needs to be transmitted to a server in a remote location, or the cloud, to be processed before it can be sent back out to the hub and then to your device. Locally managed hubs are more reliable and have lower latency, but they tend to be more expensive. Cloud managed hubs, on the other hand, are usually cheaper and easier to set up, but the addition of having to communicate with the cloud will introduce reliability and response time issues. In my case, I picked the do-it-yourself project, went with the physical hub, and decided to go with the cloud-managed system. And combined with recommendations and good reviews I had read online, along with a little bit of blind enthusiasm, I went with the Samsung SmartThings hub. I should also point out that this was never a clear-cut decision for me, and oftentimes I was paralyzed by my own research trying to brainstorm all the right products that would be compatible with the hub 
without ever physically experimenting with the devices in person. And like with most things in life, sometimes you just need to stop overthinking and just do it. If you're in a similar situation, need some guidance, or have any questions about using the Samsung SmartThings Hub, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. And if you enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.